are not going to engage a psychedelic person, a new age person who doesn't have a relativistic epistemology. When you get down to it, they, they want to make all these objective claims. They want to tell you what's truth. They want to tell you how reality really is, how the universe really works. And then you ask them, well, how are you able to do that based on your own worldview? Everything's relative and subjective. They don't have an answer. They don't have an answer. Again, the sense of wrong is just a failure to see patterns. Well, so if there's no such thing as wrong, would it have been wrong then for somebody to just put a gun up to his temple and pull the trigger? You know, is that just the cosmic self, you know, playing the game, you know, Maya, that if somebody was to walk up to Alan Watts, put a gun up to his temple and said, surprise, I'm you, you know, life and death is an illusion. See you on the other side and pull the trigger. That must be, that, that's fine. That's fine, you see, because you didn't realize that life and death is just part of a larger pattern. You see, there's no, there's nothing wrong with somebody killing another person. It's all the cosmic self. It's all a game. It's all an illusion. It's the wave, you know, coming in and out of existence. It's nonsense. Nobody actually lives their life based on that idea to be true because nobody actually believes that idea to be true. Clearly, there is right and wrong. Even again, we look at BLM, we look what's going on in this country, we look at the most progressive groups. They always want to make moral claims. They have a relativistic epistemology, which is more of a logical, rational understanding, right? Epistemology. Their worldview is emotional, and therefore they want to make objective claims based on morality because it's emotional for them, because these people are led by emotion. And the same thing is true within the New Age worldview. The same thing is true with many of these sort of spiritual uh, 20th century teachers that when you get down into it, there's not a whole lot of substance there. There's not a real foundation for knowing. You can have as much sex as you want. You can take in as much drugs as you want. You can do anything you want. All you have to do is realize the cosmic self. And this gets down to his epistemology. How do we know anything? Well, that becomes very tricky in Alan Watts' teachings because he begins to contradict himself. He presents what's obviously a very relativistic framework. But at the same time, he always appeals to science and psychoanalytics and the academy, and then he critiques that stuff, right? Because it's so, it's so uh, myopic, it's so microscopic, it's so limited in its perception of what's going on in the world that then he, that he negates that. He negates that then for his extremely general, abstract, ambiguous ideas. Again, if you take an analytic academic approach to Alan Watts and you listen to his ideas, very, very rarely will you ever hear specific details about anything. You won't. Because that requires an objective stating of the fact. His worldview 
And the idea that to truly understand reality is to truly understand that there are no distinctions, boundaries between things. That is the point of psychedelics. This is the point of the progressive mentality that we talk about in regards to politics, about the boundaries between male and female no longer exist. The boundaries between nation states no longer exist. The boundaries between biology and technology no longer exist. Transhumanism. The whole point of the progressive, and again, as Christians, we would say the satanic worldview is to dissolve all boundaries between things. Because once you do that, again, we get back to the same old mantra. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled is to convince people he didn't exist.